What's up, Earth? I hope that you are doing well. It's been a while and I have missed doing this. I took a little break, so I am happy to be back at this. And before we get into our topic, which is talking about grief and poetic justice, I am making here a st chicken stew. It is a Nigerian recipe and you can eat it with rice or swallow, which some might know swallow as fufu, but we have other type of swallows, but you'd probably add okra to it. But it's super spicy in mine. I put like four peppers in there and I let it cook for a little bit and then had it with rice and some salad. I'm usually not a salad person, but I don't know. I guess I was feeling bougie today. <laughs> so I added some salad. It was pretty good. It was fresh. And I really enjoyed it. But let's talk about poetic justice, shall we? All right. So Poetic Justice is one of my favorite movies of all time. I recently saw it on Apple TV. It's well written and it has my favorite person in the whole world starring in it, Miss Janet Jackson. Of course, the baddest guy of all time, Tupac, the late Tupac. And it resonated with me because it deals with grief and I've talked about it some to most a lot on this channel about me grieving my voice and trying to rediscover my voice not my physical voice but my artistic voice my individuality as a person and and what that looks like and trying to rediscover that voice and where did it go you know and kind of grieving that and so it, it it really deals with that so a little background on it it is a 1993 romantic drama it is written and directed by the late john singleton and it follows justice who is who portrays that uh, role is janet jackson and it follows how she copes with the pain of losing a boyfriend in a tragic shooting incident and how she finds solace in her passion for poetry and expressing her emotion through writing. And so we, we kind of follow her journey and how she deals and copes with healing. So it really deals with loss, like I said, healing and the power of expressing yourself artistically. It highlights the importance of human connection and empathy as the characters navigate their respective emotional journey because Lucky who is played by Tupac also is in the process of grieving he lost his favorite cousin in a shooting and I feel like he also might might have blamed himself for his cousin getting shot and so they're both in this healing process and for justice the way she deals with her grief is basically pushing love away like she has no time for love it's not something she wants ever again after losing her partner and for him i don't know that he's really he's not really expressing that or really engaging with his grief right until the end is like where we see where we discover how the loss of his cousin has truly impacted his life right and so the film really explores the impact of trauma on individuals and their ability to find hope and resilience in unexpected places. I know for me, losing my voice came from experiencing sexual harassment and kind of like blaming myself for it and just how challenging that really was and like, why did I allow that to happen? And so I found like, I found that my voice was completely lost and, and I had to rediscover that and I really had to grieve that and that was a process for me. It's got engaging performances, it's thought provoking storytelling and John Singleton really uses poetry to 
captivate the tale of love, loss, and self-discovery. And I think that's why I really resonated with with audiences. And I think that's why it's really it was it's still now a really popular movie. And it really explores the human spirit to face traumatic experiences or adversity with resilience. So it's really good. It's a really wonderful movie and it's well shot as well. So for any of us dealing with grief, it's an emotional roller coaster, right? And Justice really was emotional roller coaster i don't think she got out of bed for a while and then you could see it in her dressing for most of the time she wore black all the time or dark colors and it was just like really like i'm done with living right like essentially she didn't want to live because she'd lost the love of her life like she really loved him and that's why and her and lucky clashed i think they clashed because they were both going through the same thing and they weren't very much into articulating what they were feeling especially lucky right we knew she was grieving she was done with love and all of that but with him you kind of didn't know but he was grieving his cousin. And so grief is an emotional roller coaster. There are days I didn't want to get out of bed because I felt really lost. Like if I've lost my voice, then I'm really lost, right? Like I really don't know why I'm here. And, you know, trying to move forward was a challenge. But I had to be mindful that I was grieving and I need to acknowledge that I did suffer a loss and that it's okay, you know, and I have to allow myself to embrace the ups and down and allow myself to grieve at my own pace. So no matter what anybody else was saying, I just had to allow myself to grieve. And there are days I'm crying out to God like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And so it's okay to have those days when you're grieving a loss, you know, it's normal to have good and bad days and you've just got to allow yourself to be that way. So moving forward after you suffer a loss does not mean you forget or replace that person. It just means that you find a way to integrate that loss into your life and create a new sense of purpose and meaning, not normalcy, you know, but maybe but it's just a new sense of purpose and meaning. And it's about cherishing the memories, learning from the experiences and finding strength in the love that, that you shared. You know, I really loved my old voice, right? Like I was, I would speak up. There was nothing like I, I couldn't say. There was nothing I felt like I couldn't do. But I know in this new state, I have to, it'll be different. In this new voice, it'll be different. It won't be the same way. But I know that in this new state, I can create new things, you know, and break boundaries. Who knows? But ultimately, moving forward is a deep personal journey and it requires a lot of patience, self compassion, and a willingness to embrace the future while you hold on to the memory of the person that you loved in your heart but allowing yourself to heal and grow and it is possible to find a renewed hope meaning and happiness in life while always carrying the love and lessons of the one you've lost you know so as time passes by we find ways to honor the memory of the ones we've loved it's not that we forget them we never forget them and my prayer if you carry any guilt you know for someone that you've lost in whatever way whether trauma whether naturally it's still a loss there is no difference it's not big or small it's still a loss if you blame yourself you've got to let that go it is not your fault and you've got to live because you're still here but it's never forgetting that person remember i said it's about now integrating that loss into your life and finding a new sense of purpose and meaning okay 
Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I hope that you know that you are comforted and that God will never abandon us during our time of grief. He will always provide us with love and hope. And that doesn't mean we forget those that we love. It just means that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And so hold your head up high and embrace those days when it's good and bad. But know that you can overcome this. And I believe that you can. And Justice and Lucky did overcome it. She started wearing white. They did get together. She allowed love back into her life. And it was a refreshing love. And it was, it was unexpectedly, right? But it was worth it. And he did heal too. He moved forward with the loss of his cousin and wanted to be better, a better person for it. So you can do it, although it hurts right now, but you will overcome. And there'll come a time where they are part of your memory and they do influence how you live your life and what you do from day to day. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you have not seen Poetic Justice, go watch it. Because oftentimes when we watch things, they are cathartic. Is that the right word? They just kind of, they resonate with us. And they bring up stuff that we felt like we've dealt with. But we actually have never dealt with before. And so, yeah, check it out. But thank you guys so much for watching and listening. And I will see you next time. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.